Greetings, Focus Wire family. My name is Martinique Lewis, and I am a diversity and travel consultant here to talk to you all about diversity and inclusion within the travel tech space. Now, I'm sure what you're thinking, another diversity conversation. Well, absolutely, because for the first time in 2020, the world was forced to look at issues that we have within our own communities so that we can be more inclusive of everybody. So I'm here today to share something with you called the diversity and travel or travel tech report card. More about myself. Well, I am a diversity and travel consultant. And what does that mean? That means that tourism boards and travel brands hire me to help them understand how to connect with inclusive communities, whether it be online, whether it be through traditional media, whether it be through products that they need to use every time they go on holiday or business trip. Additionally, I am the social media and influencer manager for a travel tech company out of San Francisco called Skyrim. I'm the creative lead of Nomad Madness Travel Tribe, which is a community for black and brown travelers of over a 100,000 expats and hyper travelers that started about nine years ago. And last but certainly not least, I am the creator of the number one selling book or travel guide called the ABC Travel Green Book. It is a book that helps travelers connect with the African diaspora globally. My book can tell you things that the search engines can't about how to identify not only black owned communities or black owned businesses on six out of seven continents. Now, one thing we know is that consumers spend a crazy amount of money on travel annually. And even as these numbers go up, there is still a lack of diversity and inclusion in everything they see from the internal travel teams to the external promotions and marketing that companies like yours might put out. So something that I've done for the past two years is I created something called the Diversity and Travel Report Card. Now, this report card was for the overall industry, but today we're going to tailor it to the travel tech industry. So as you can see on the left in the purple and blue, what I graded the overall travel industry on was diversity in ads and promotions, diversity at travel conference and trade shows, diversity on social media, diversity in influencer trips, diversity in traditional media, diversity and inclusion at travel companies, diversity in travel programs and events, and overall sensitivity to diversity. Now, obviously, not all of these things are going to apply to travel tech companies, so I switched it a little bit. And I want us to go through these things so I can tell you what they mean, but I want you to take this and go back to your company and grade your company on these things to figure out, is your company reflective of everybody that's been money with you. One point I love to always talk about is the fact that multicultural travelers and travelers who fit in different niches are 70% more likely to support companies where they see themselves reflected. And does that only mean in marketing? No, that means is there a social media manager who looks different? Is there a customer service manager who looks different? Are there C-level execs that are reflective of the people who are spending money with your brand? So, Give yourself a grade when it comes to diversity at your own company. That means internally. And that doesn't only mean race. That can mean religion. That can mean gender. That can mean age. That can mean abilities. That can mean, do you have somebody on your team internally that possibly is either blind or deaf or in a wheelchair? And why do you need that? So that they can give you their perspective so you can understand your consumer from that viewpoint. Additionally, diversity and inclusion on social media. What does your company portray? Does your company only show white, skinny, able-bodied people using your products? And if so, how does that translate with you either tapping into new markets or getting in new consumers to your business? What is diversity and inclusion at travel tech conferences and trade shows. Is this the first time you've seen somebody who looks like me at Focuswire? Do you notice that there's somebody who might be um, 
First Nation? Do you notice that there might be somebody who might be deaf? Are there things for somebody who's hearing impaired in terms of captions to see if they're tuning in to focus why or any other travel conference that you've been to? Start to think about those things because you'll start to see that no, the industry is not very much so inclusive. It's not reflective of all the different people who might be purchasing your product. Diversity and inclusion in HR. So you might ask me, why is this important? Because those are the people who are doing the hiring. Those are the people who either hire more males and females. Those are the people who will hire somebody who might be differently able. Those are the people who might recruit from those schools that have a higher Latino and Asian population there to make sure that there's diversity within your company. Diversity and inclusion in HR is extremely important. Diversity and inclusion in ads and promotions what physical things are your company pulling out and overall sensitivity to diversity and inclusion in the travel and tech industry. Do you even care? Does your company give a damn? And can we tell based off of the things that you do? Did your company not care at first and now they care and we can tell the difference based off of the way you guys have transitioned and pivoted during the COVID era. And the thing about it is, if not, there's opportunity to move forward and show more diversity and inclusion. Now, I would love to just give you some facts. One thing that we know is that numbers do not lie. So 63 billion is the amount in this actually 63 billion plus and the number could change as another, uh, as another research comes out at mid November. But 63 billion dollars plus is the amount of money that African Americans spend on travel annually. 63 billion. That's not a small number. And now think, how much do we show African Americans in either our advertising and promotion? How many African Americans do we have on our team? And not only that, that's just African Americans. That's not Jamaican Americans. That's not Haitian Americans. That's not Panamanian Americans. That's not people who identify as black. So that's only 63 million. Now imagine what it would be if you added all those other things. 220 billion huge number. That's the number that Muslims spend on travel annually. Do you have any Muslim people in your internal staff? Do you ever show any type of Muslim travel within anything that you do? No, but they are the ones that spend the most out of anybody else in our industry. And by 2026, they are projected to spend 300 billion. I always tell companies you would want to start appealing to them because they have the funds to go. And 1.6 billion, this is the amount of revenue a brand would generate if they captured 10% of the Hispanic adventure travel market. So if you're a travel tech company, right? And, and your brand is for adventure travelers, this is how much you would get if you only spent 10% on capturing that market. Now, I don't have a lot of time. This session was short, but I would love to open it up for questions. And this thing that you see to the right is something that I put out earlier this year called the inclusion brunch bunch, excuse me. And what does that consist of? This was a visual to show you this is what diversity and inclusion looks like. So from left to right, you have Sassy Wyatt, who is a blind travel blogger and journalist. You have myself in the middle, somebody who always puts an emphasis not only on black travel, but diversity in travel. I'm the one who's going to tell you, hey, you know, as a travel tech company, is your travel app, does it make sense to somebody who can't physically hear what it might say? Does it make sense to somebody who might be blind? How are they able to use it? Or I might say, hey, as a hotel, do you understand what it's like as a plus size person to have to turn to the side to walk through your narrow doorways? So that's what I do. On my right, there is Jeff Jenkins, who runs a community called Chubby Diaries, who puts on for plus size travelers, which a lot of people might not think about, but they are there. The person underneath Sassy, Charlotte Sampson, she represents Represents travelers who are 60 and older. She said, everybody just thinks I want diapers and AARP. I travel just like you guys do and I have the money to do it. I've saved my money to do it. Next to her is Dr. Kiona who goes hard for under marginalized communities who talks about how she never sees herself reflected in travel anything and she is Asian. Then underneath that you have Dan and Carl who are a part of the LGBTQIA plus community who spends more than black 
travelers, uh, Hispanic travelers and Asian travelers, but does your company appeal to them? And not only in June, but in general, you have Karima Asheru, who is a Muslim traveler, who I just let you know, they spend 220 billion and 300 billion by the end of 2026. And then last, but certainly not least, you have Corey, Curb Free Corey Lee, somebody who has taken on all seven continents and does it all from a wheelchair. Think about how your products or how your company would affect him. Do you move forward with him in mind? Thank you so much for listening to me for this short period of time. And now we will open it up for questions.